think uh, some of the events that had happened are not very proud moments for the Maldivian history. Some of the things we could have avoided, some of the things we would have wanted to do differently. And uh, the past uh, few days are not showing very proud moments for us. But they define us as a country. They tell us what we are as a country and what we are going through. And uh, we need to learn from these events. We have lots to learn from them. And I would suggest, or probably if I could convince a few others, I would want to have an exercise where some independent lawyers in partnership with the Prosecutor General or the Human Rights Commission or even an international body would want to revisit the uh, events, look at them purely from a professional angle in the, right of our in the light of our constitution, human rights, democracy, and see what went wrong, what needs to be done to consolidate democracy in this country, and um, what the whole uh, succession of events has actually transpired. So I think somebody need uh, a group of professional people, credible people, need to do an independent assessment of the events that had happened in this country and see who is wrong, who is to be blamed, where the fault was, where the fault uh, could have been rectified and what went wrong in this country. What made President Nasheed go home? What made this country see a government get terminated prematurely? What made a vice president rise up to be president? And why the chaos in the country? Why the division? How we could um, come to a compromise, talk nation rather than people, talk generations rather than elections, and see how we could build this country despite the differences we have. We have to find common ground. We have no choice but to stress on common ground. What unites us is more important than what divides us. Thank that you, is sir. my message. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. And we end this special coverage with a report that takes a look at the events that unfolded over the past few days, which led to the President Nasheed's resignation. Thank you for being with us. Have a good night. The activities led by 23rd December Alliance for 22 consecutive nights ended unexpectedly. The protests which began at the MMA area ended at Artificial Beach. When MMA grounds were closed, protesters moved to the fish market area and the streets of Mali. Protests took a turn for the worse when the protesters started gathering at the Artificial Beach area. Since then, every night, MDP activists gathered at the area and tried to counter the peaceful protests. The protests which were being held to oppose the unlawful arrest and detention of criminal court chief Judge Abdullah Muhammad on the orders of former President Muhammad Nasheed ended in the most unexpected manner. Like other nights, on the 6th, when 23rd December Alliance, members of the public and opposition parties gathered at the artificial beach area to continue the protests, MDP activists were already gathered there. Before the protest could really begin, things heated up when protesters and MDP activists started exchanging verbal attacks. Before things could take a violent turn, police arrived at the scene and started to separate the crowds to stop violence from erupting. However, police were soon ordered to move from the area on the orders of their leading commander. Police moved from the area upon the arrival of the defense force. As soon as police left the area, Clashes erupted between protesters and MDP activists. While they were throwing stones and other objects at each other, the defense forces stood idly by. Police who left the area suddenly arrived at the scene and started to control the violence. When police officers left the area, their discontent was clearly evident from their faces. The police force marched the Republic Square and the events that took place after that would not have been predicted by anyone. They started protesting the unlawful orders that were being issued to them by the government. Soon, officials of the defense force were deployed to counter the police and to try and convince them to reconsider their actions. However, the number of protesting police officers kept increasing. Then, recently resigned President Mohammed Nasheed even attended the protest and asked the police to drop their arms and to give in to the MNDF, promising them no harm if they did 
When he attended the protest, neither the police commissioner Ahmed Fasih nor Home Minister Hassan Afif had addressed the situation. Police, however, did not allow Nasheed to address them and called on the authorities to free the uniformed bodies. At around 8 o'clock in the morning, the first clashes erupted between police and the armed forces. The MNDF first used a large amount of tear gas and started filing into the Republic Square. The police who were protesting took up the challenge and confronted them. MNDF officials then fired rubber bullets against the police and other protesters. But police did not relent. With the help of shields that their allies at the police headquarters threw to them, they confronted the army while civilian protesters threw stones and other objects at the MNDF officials. That resulted in the MNDF going back into the army headquarters. While these confrontations were going on, no one knew the exact location of Muhammad Nasheed. However, witnesses said that he was in the MNDF headquarters. Suddenly, celebratory cheers erupted in the Republic Square when some officials of the police defected to the opposition. More MNDF officials kept joining the police protesters and MNDF and police officials from nearby islands also came to Male to join the protest. What we heard after that was that protesters from the uniformed bodies had set conditions for the government. They demanded the president to resign by 1.30 and for the police commissioner Ahmad Fassi and his two assistants to resign as well. They said that the conditions were not negotiable. The police commissioner Ahmad Fassi was the first to give in to the conditions set by the opposing forces when he resigned. After realizing the situation and the mindset of police and defense force, former President Mohammed Nasheed also decided to resign. He announced his decision at a press conference held at President's office at 1 o'clock. <laughs> Adi Rajya, itu kira guna jilid itu kerudan sama. Awalan dah pernah sih le. Awalan tu ni Rajya ke Rais itu muria kamu ni tu sesiapa istiqamah tu. Although he announced that he resigned voluntarily, less than 24 hours into his resignation, President Nasheed and his allies started claiming that he was forced to resign at gunpoint. Rajya kampul tapung balom ke gendawani. Tidak, tidak.